What's up, everyone? Jeff here. <laughs> and Alyssa. <laughs> What's up, guys? Bon Kui Kui here. This is Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> no, actually, you should be Bon Kui Kui. Yeah, I should yeah, be Jimmy yeah. Fallon. Anyways, what's up, guys? Jeff and Alyssa here. This is a special treat for us. Hopefully, it is for you guys, too. We haven't done a video like this in, what, almost like a year? Maybe more than a year. More than a year. Because we were living we were living back in Washington last time we did yeah. a video like this. Um, so we thought we would bring it back for a few questions. Make sure to ask questions in the comments. The one we're going to deal with this week is a tough one, which is why I think I wanted to do it, um, but also why I haven't wanted to do it, if that makes sense. And that's what to do with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, because it goes both ways, is addicted to pornography or has a struggle with lust or uh, things of that matter manner and um i don't know do you want to go first or no no this one's you <laughs> okay so um the reason i wanted to take this question is i think it's really prevalent it's probably one of the main yeah. questions that we get from mm -hmm. people in a relationship high school college young adult um just saying they're dating but their boyfriend's addicted to porn or another way this plays out in a subtle way is that he's looking at kind of a uh, scandalous instagram accounts or uh, uh kind of scrolling through different things on the internet it can be kind of different ways but the issue really is or even just looking at other girls instagram exactly accounts. yeah exactly and the, and the issue really is in a relationship, hopefully, which we talked about in this series, if you're on the path um, that's a good path, it usually means marriage is probably a goal for you guys. And for that, you want to set a really strong foundation. Mm -hmm. And um, nine, this, this is hard because we have to be really big picture here because we don't know the exact scenarios. So there is a little, uh, it's hard to have nuance in a topic like this. But I would say nine times out of 10, maybe even 10 times out of 10, if there is that in the relationship and you know it, I mean, I think it's it's really hard, but I think the simple answer is you just have to break up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that's that sounds harsh Where's and that sounds hard, yeah, okay. because because yeah, because if you're if marriage is the end game, mm -hmm. you're really setting a bad foundation. Well, here, here's here's another way to put it: you should break up with him because he's already dating someone else. It's just mm -hmm. a two D pixel on a screen, right? right? Like he's still he's in a relationship intimately in his mind and his heart with someone else. And Jesus is the one that set that standard, right? When in Matthew 5, Sermon on the Mount, when people come to him and he kind of looks back at the Torah and says, this is the law, this is the rule. Jesus doesn't soften it. He actually lifts it and says, yeah, yeah, that's the out, outside external rule. But I say, if you even look on a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed, you've break, break and broken that law. So I would say, uh, yeah, you need to understand that if marriage is the goal, break up might be something you need to do. Now, for a few reasons. One, he he or, or she needs to probably get help in that regard, needs to get reconciliation and healing. Two, sometimes it's the thing that the guy needs. Sometimes he needs something so dramatic to happen that he kind of says, oh my goodness, I need to wake up. Yeah. I need to get kind of stuff together. I need to figure this out. And, and the third thing is he does need help. And you're probably not the person to do that. It's, yeah. it's first of all, the Lord. Mm -hmm. There needs to be real deep spiritual healing, but then also probably someone older, a mentor of the same gender, probably um, in a church community, something of that nature. And it has to be brought into the light. I mean, those are just my off the cuff initial thoughts. I mean, what would you add to that? Um, I mean, as a, from a girl's perspective, I guess, if you're dating someone like that, or if you see if a girl comes up to you and asks that question, how would you respond to her? Yeah, I think um, a few things that come to mind. I think in our culture today, porn is very acceptable, and especially um, in a non-Christian atmosphere, it's like a no-brainer. Like, mm -hmm. of course, I'm going to watch it. Why wouldn't it? I? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. it's part of our relationship, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, which, so we have to realize we are not of this world. We're in this world, but we can't be sucked into that thinking, and it mm -hmm. is wrong. It yeah. is not what the Lord wants. It's not the best. It's, um, I mean, that's a whole nother issue, but, um, it can be very detrimental to the person watching mm -hmm. it. And then of course, um, when you're in a relationship, so don't take it lightly. And I think a lot of girls, I'm going to just speak on the girls because mm -hmm. that's what I know. Um, if they know that their boyfriend is watching porn or yeah. lust after girls or is like making friends with random girls on Instagram that he doesn't know, but he mm -hmm. just likes looking at their pictures. Yep. You can just kind of say, well, like he's a guy, that's just what he does. Mm -hmm. Or it's just Instagram. Don't settle for that. Like yeah. you yeah. do not have to settle. Um, you want in your heart. I feel like that's the Lord telling you, like, don't settle for a guy that doesn't fight for purity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pray and look for men or a man mm -hmm. that um, is a man of purity and a man of integrity and pray for that for your future husband. Pray for that for your boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that come to my head. And then also 
maybe you don't know. And I think when you're in a relationship and maybe even towards the beginning, mm-hmm. like you start dating, maybe the first month or so, you need to have that hard conversation and you need to ask him the hard questions yeah. of, um, do you watch porn? When was the last time you watched it? Yeah, because I think sometimes Have it's you... really vague. Yeah, like and then that can... say, oh, I've watched it before, and then that could be it. Yeah. That's not enough of yeah. a conversation. But it's really hard to do an awkward, but if you're, if you're yeah. on the journey towards marriage, the questions have to be very specific because you're signing up for life. And mm-hmm. so you need to, yeah, like what you were saying. What were some of the other ones? Or what were so, saying? like, when was the last yeah. time you watched it? Um, how long were you addicted to it? Mm-hmm. What do you do to stay accountable to not watch yeah, it? Yeah. How hard of a porn was it that you were watching? Mm-hmm. You need to know those things and you have the right to ask those yeah. things. So don't be intimidated like, oh, I can't ask him because yeah. that's just too too vulnerable. Or yeah. like, how could I ask? Like, no, go there. Yeah. You're in a relationship. You guys have the right to know those things about each other. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And that's what, yeah, I think it's... And why not, sorry, one more thing. Yeah. Why not ask those towards the beginning before you yeah. get really serious? Yep, yep. And then all of a sudden you like are in love with him and yep. you want to marry him. But oh, hey, there's this yep. huge addiction here. And yeah. now what do we do? Because the worst part is people who, who you can tell they are settling and they know they're settling, mm-hmm. but they're doing it because they've been with the person for two or three years. And they that's just really hard to break yeah. up after that. And you know, that's going to be a lot of emotional healing, all that type of stuff. And so, yeah. So if you do in the beginning, it's a little bit easier to say, hey, this is where I'm going. Are you coming here too? Are we on the same path? Are we going yeah. to the same place? One thing I'd also say too, is it also distorts marriage mm-hmm. and how sexuality is supposed to operate, right? If Even I'm, the dating relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying with your end goal, it really sets up a bad mm-hmm. foundation because sexuality is a thing that God created as this covenantal, really, really intimate. In fact, the deepest, most intimate moment you can have. It's kind of like this glue of marriage that's mm-hmm. constantly like renewing your vows. I've heard, you know, yeah. um, where it's constantly you giving yourself to the other person, serving the other person mm-hmm. in kind of this, this giving and transparency yeah. and intimacy. I think but, that's the key is sex is giving. Yeah. It's not what you can but get. But porn creates the exact opposite. Yeah. And it's really almost this animalistic, distorted view of sexuality. Mm-hmm. because it's the opposite it's not about giving it's about taking and about receiving and about what can I get and that just really really sets a bad hard foundation um, for marriage and for the future and so um, that's what I would say and lastly the last thing I would say and hopefully you can give a note of encouragement on this too is there is healing I don't want I don't it's hard because I really want to come down hard on the the um, the hard truth of this issue because I think it really affects a lot of relationships but I also want to come down just as hard on the fact that there's so much hope and healing mm-hmm. so much hope and healing. Oh, I mean, I've had that in my own life. I know friends who have had that in their life, in their marriages, when it did come out later, yeah. um, in dating relationships, whatever it is. I know people who have found reconciliation, hope in Jesus. Jesus sees your porn addiction. He's sitting in the room with you. I know that's really awkward to think about, but he knows it. He sees it. And he not with one second looks on you with an eye of condemnation. He looks at you with eyes of love, of grace, of mercy, and says, you are my child. I have something better for you. And you have to sit in that, rest in that every single day. And so I want to end with that, that if you do break up, know that that's the place that Jesus is calling you into. Breaking up doesn't mean that that was a failure or anything like that. It means it means that might be the thing that actually needs to take you to a success, that Jesus wants mm-hmm. to take you to a successful healing, a beautiful place, um, kind of his paradise, he calls it, that, that really shalom of just your life finally being what it was created to be and not kind of playing in the kiddie pool of pornography per se. But um, yeah, that's what I would say. Any final thoughts? thoughts from you yeah I think um just another thing what really encouraged me with Jeff is when we were dating like it um you have an accountability group Mm -hmm. like you were on is it triple x church they do an accountability thing I'll put a link down there by the way yeah and um so if you ever went to a site it would go right to your mom or Mm -hmm. your best friend whoever you whoever you pick yeah so just knowing that about you gave me so much peace because mm-hmm. I knew that you were being proactive in um, fighting against the temptation. Yeah. And then also, I love the um, term dealing in the light mm-hmm. and just how like um, you would always come to me and say, hey, like this was a thing that was hard for me or mm-hmm. I accidentally looked at this or mm-hmm. I, you know, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was so encouraging to me because... Yeah you're not withholding it. Mm-hmm. You're not keeping it in the darkness, but you're bringing it to the light. And so um, even if, you know, whatever, maybe you're dating someone and that was a problem for them mm-hmm. in the past and it's not anymore. Like if you guys are having those conversations and he's bringing up like, pray for me in this mm-hmm. or, 
you know, forgive me for this. Like, yeah. that is so cool. And that is yeah. such a um, yeah. thing to rejoice in that yeah. you're dealing in the light and you're mm-hmm. seeking healing because we're not perfect. Yeah. But as long as we're dealing um, in the light, bring it in the light. In, yeah, yeah, the light. Yeah. And that's what I would say. Just bring it into the light. Mm-hmm. Ladies specifically, and again, this goes both ways, but ladies specifically with guys, find a guy who is ruthless about bringing it into the light, meaning he will not let it go one second without it being, um, you know, brought into accountability in the public in the light all that stuff because there's some there's something kind of mysteriously spiritual that happens and when you bring it into light mm-hmm. satan just loses his power he cannot he yeah. operates best in darkness and so that, i'll end with this um i think both scenarios need to find deep healing if there is a problem or if there's an addiction but ladies if it's a guy who like he just kind of just defends it or or maybe like not doesn't defend or it but like just kind of no yeah or if he gets defensive if he if he tries to justify it or it's no big deal and maybe usually that can even be with s- subtle stuff like on Instagram stuff like that where it's not porn pornography but if he's just really defensive in the sense of like who are you to tell me it's no big deal whatever okay that is just you just need to go I think that's yeah. just that is such a terrible sign of who that pro- who he'll probably be and continue to be in a marriage in leadership as a husband and you don't want that if it's a guy who is deeply repentant constantly on like what I was saying ruthless about bringing into light that's a different scenario I think there still needs to be maybe a breakup maybe mm-hmm. healing maybe stuff like that but very different scenario God is in the middle of that I believe so would you say anything else no that's it we love you guys sorry this was so long put more questions down in the bottom we would love to keep doing this series like we did last year and that's all we got talk to you guys later Hey guys, thanks for watching. You know we love Audible on this channel, and I wanted to think of one book specifically that ties with this issue, and we read in our premarital counseling, Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller. It doesn't specifically deal with pornography, but it is hands down the best book on marriage. I love to read. I read a ton of books on marriage. This one just nails it. I feel like it'll be around for, you know, 500 years. (laughs) It's amazing. You loved it as well. We even had a chunk of it read at our wedding Mm -hmm. ceremony. It's on Audible for completely free. If you go through my link, audible.com slash Jeff, you get the first month free, you get the first book free. It's amazing. I, I, I don't say a lot of books are must read. This one is. Go check it out. Love you guys.